Okay, now I have a chance to tell you how to do this so that it works in your life. I mean, it's one thing to know what you're supposed to do and to listen to all the research and to get all the information, but when you go home and you have to do this, what you need are a few tools to make this work for you so that you're successful. And that's really important. First thing you have to take into consideration is what kind of a cook are you? I mean, do you really like to make this as gourmet as possible? Which is very doable. You can make wonderful gourmet meals. Spend all kinds of time in the kitchen. We have thousands of recipes that are just very, very delicious. So you can easily spend a lot of time. But most people, they just want to eat. They don't want to spend hours. They just want to do this really fast. And so there are all kinds of things you can do really quickly. You don't have to spend hours doing this. Even the recipes that we prepare in our program are mainly taken from the Quick and Easy Cookbook. Things you can prepare in 15 minutes or less. Everybody has 15 minutes. And now that you know how to read labels, it's really simple. So what you want to do to make this work for you is to change as little as possible. Because if you try to take, change too many things, then it sometimes becomes overwhelming. So you want to keep this as simple as possible to make it work in your life. And that's the thing that I want you to remember when we're talking about all of this. Now, it's really important to prepare. Uh, my family loves to scuba dive. And when we learned how to dive, one of the most important things that they teach you, and they say it to you over and over again, is to plan your dive and dive your plan. And you hear this all the time, even when you go on a trip. It's one of the things they tell you before you go in the water. You have to plan your dive, and then you dive your plan, and then your chances of success in your dive are better. Well, the same thing is true when you're planning your meals. You need to take the time to plan out your meals. There's one thing I hate more than anything else is when it gets to be 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and John says to me, what are we having for dinner tonight? And I've been busy doing something else all day, and I think, oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about dinner yet, and I don't like that. I like feeling that I'm prepared in the morning, and I already know, even the day before sometime, what I'm going to have for dinner the next day, because then I don't have to think about it anymore. So that's something that is, is really, really important. Plan out a menu. Now that you know how to shop for foods, you can make a shopping list, plan out a menu. And if you do this for three or four day, days at a time, it works much better. So, some people like to do it for a week, and that is great if you have the time. But most people can find the time to do three or four days. And just keep it really simple. Think about what you want to have for dinner the next few days. And write it down. And then you can make your shopping list or look in your pantry, make sure you have these things available. And then when dinner time come, rolls around, you've already got your meal plan ready. It'll make it so much easier for you. And then I also recommend that you keep some things in your pantry that are emergency foods. Things that you can prepare really quickly, such as the pizza crust that I showed you, or some burgers in the freezer. So that when you get home really late and you don't even want to take that 15 minutes to put something together, you can say, OK, well, I can make a pizza. Or I could just have some burgers tonight. Just something so that when you're driving home from work, 
You're not sitting there thinking, oh no, what am I going to fix for dinner? Or I'm really too tired. I don't want to do this. Oh, but I know. I got a pizza. I got some burgers. Something that you can do without even thinking about it. Something that's healthy. And then you won't be tempted to stop at the drive through on the way home. Now, when you're planning your meals, the things to remember are to plan your meal around a starch. We talk a lot about starches, complex carbohydrates. Think about these as the centerpiece of your meal. When you think about the way you used to eat and someone said to you, what's for dinner tonight? What'd you talk about? The centerpiece of the meal. Well, we're having steak tonight or we're having chicken or we're having fish or pork chops. That's what you talked about. You didn't say what else you were having. That was the main part of the meal. Now I want you to think about the starch as being the main part of the meal. And that's what you need to make most of. The pizza is a starch. Plan your meal around pasta. That's a starch. Rice, potatoes. This is the main part of your meal. When I make a bean burrito meal, which is my family's favorite, whenever my boys come home, whenever my daughter comes home, it's always bean burritos. Because everybody loves those, and you can vary them very simply. You have beans, tortillas, and all the toppings. And so that's a staple in my home. I always have the things in my pantry so I can prepare that really easily. Pasta is another great meal. Marinara sauce, delicious. Rice, potatoes. When you're planning out your meal and you're writing down your meal, for, your meal plan for the week, you can have rice one night, pasta the next night, potatoes the next night. Make it much, much easier. And then to this, you can add your green and yellow vegetables and have a varied meal plan. Now, it doesn't have to be as elaborate as the food we serve you here. You don't have to make two soups for dinner and then a salad and a couple of entrees. You just need to keep it very, very simple. You have to have enough food so that when you leave the table, you're full. You don't want to leave the table hungry. We don't want you to be hungry. That doesn't work for very long. It's very difficult to be hungry. So you have to make sure you have enough food. Now take a look at this list. This is a list of foods, and if you look through it, most of the things on this list are familiar to almost everyone. So let's start with breakfast. Do you very often eat the same thing for breakfast every day? Most people think nothing about eating the same thing for breakfast. That's fine. Makes it really simple, OK? We're going to plan breakfast for the week. OK, I'm going to have oatmeal every day. Oatmeal and some fruit. OK, that meal is taken care of. So you find a healthy thing for breakfast. Maybe you like hash brown potatoes. Maybe you'd rather have cold cereals. That's really simple. So you find a healthy breakfast, and you can just repeat that. That's easy. For lunch, you can do things like soups, sandwiches, burritos, leftovers from the night before or two days before. Make a great, easy lunch. You can take them with you, heat them up easily. Very, very easy. And again, then you have your lunch menu all planned out for three or four days or for a week, whichever you prefer to do. And then for dinner, Mexican foods, Italian foods, Oriental foods, the kind of things that you already like. You know what we find a lot of in the program is people will come to the program and sometimes they don't have a really good idea of what the food's going to be like. Maybe they were used to eating a lot of meat, a lot of cheeses, things like that. And when they hear the word vegetarian, they think all we eat is salads because they don't know any other vegetables or anything else. And so they come to the program, and the first few meals, they go, oh, this is really good. I could eat this. And that's the idea. This is delicious food. 
It's easy to prepare and everybody loves it. So you just need to find some things that you like and you'll get really good at preparing them. And you can serve them over and over again. You don't have to have a huge variety. You need to keep it simple enough that it works for you. And that's really the most important part. And then you'll notice we also have desserts. Lots of desserts, but remember, desserts are a treat. You're not supposed to eat mostly dessert desserts for dinner. <coughs> and you're not supposed to have two or three desserts and then a little bit of the entree. Desserts are supposed to be special, just like a birthday party when it's your birthday. Do you ever eat Mexican food, Chinese food, Japanese food? When John and I travel, we usually look for ethnic restaurants as opposed to vegetarian restaurants because usually in those kind of places you can order healthy things. They eat lots of starches, they eat lots of vegetables, and you can do the same thing at home. If you like these kind of foods, look for recipes that contain these ingredients. These are illustrations of the kind of foods that you would get in a Mexican restaurant or at home. You can make all these things with healthy ingredients. And they're delicious. So don't feel like you're going to be deprived. You can have wonderful food, the kind of food that you like, with just a little bit of effort. And it's worth it. Many, many Chinese restaurants, many Oriental recipes in the cookbook, in the newsletter. Very easy to prepare. Japanese foods, many people don't fix Japanese foods at home, but sushi is really easy to make. Now, when I say the word sushi, what do you think about? Fish. But that's not what sushi is. You can make delicious vegetable sushi. Sushi contains vegetables, sometimes fish, but it doesn't have to. And uh, sweetened rice, sometimes with seaweed rolled inside, sometimes with seaweed rolled outside. And it's easy to prepare at home. You can order it in any Japanese restaurant. They don't put oil in it. So those kind of things, remember those kind of things, that the things that maybe you wouldn't ordinarily think about as being healthy are wonderful for you. Italian foods. There's all kinds of things that fit into the Italian menu. The lasagna we had was delicious, very simple to make. Pasta is easy. Everyone knows how to make pasta. You make a delicious red marinara sauce to go over the top. Very simple. You can buy it in the store, like we talked about. American foods are a little bit different, because when you think about American foods, the things that come to mind are all the foods that are really not healthy for us, except for mashed potatoes. You can make delicious, creamy, wonderful mashed potatoes with hardly any effort at all. You can either make the potatoes with a little bit of vegetable broth to mash them with, or with a little soy or rice milk. You can add seasonings to them. Uh, roasted garlic makes a wonderful seasoning to add to mashed potatoes. Um, chopped green onions are great added to it. Um, so you can do a lot of things with it. And just think about potatoes. They're a starch. They can be the centerpiece of the meal, and everybody loves potatoes. And all of these things result when you eat this way. They taste delicious. You leave the table satisfied. You're not hungry. And pretty soon you'll notice how much better you feel. 
Now, it's not going to happen overnight for most people. After all, it didn't take you one day to get into the condition that you are in right now. So it's not going to be instant, but you'll notice that you start to feel better almost instantly. Sometimes after only one meal, you notice that you feel better. So it's worth making a little bit extra effort. And pretty soon people will notice. And they'll ask what you're doing. And that's the perfect time to tell them if you feel like it. Remember to take the time to plan your meals. It's really important and make a shopping list. It could make the difference between whether you're successful and whether it's really difficult for you. And I've talked to a lot of people who have told me that it really works for them if they have a menu written down. And we do this during the program. We actually sit down and plan a menu for a whole week and they take it home with them. And it makes it a lot easier. Remember to plan your meal around the starch. This is also really, really important. And that, again, that will make it easier for you when you're planning your meals. You think about that starch, and then to that, you can add the other things you want to serve with it. Keep it very simple. You don't have to fix a wide variety of food. You just have to fix enough so that you don't get hungry and you leave the table satisfied. A lot of times you think about how people crave dessert. You hear that all the time. Oh, I have to have dessert after a meal. Well, maybe that's because you didn't eat enough food to be full when you leave the table. If you're full when you leave the table, that dessert doesn't look so appealing. And keep your kitchen well stocked. Again, that's really important. Put all those things that are healthy in your pantry so that when you're hungry, you look in your pantry and, oh, there's something good there to eat. You don't want to have a bare refrigerator and a bare cupboard and then be hungry. You want to have things in there to choose from. Now, after your pantry is all stocked and your meals are all planned, you have to have the right cookware because this will really make it easier for you. And quality cookware is important because it will last a long time. It will make it much more enjoyable for you. So we're going to talk for a few minutes about the kind of things that I use in my kitchen and that I find really save me a lot of time and things that I wouldn't want to be without. Have you ever had the experience of either traveling and um, renting um, a stocked place where you, you actually go in the kitchen and you cook with somebody else's stuff and it feels really unfamiliar and you, and you just you don't like being in the kitchen because everything's wrong? They have the wrong kind of pans and the wrong kind of spoons and they don't have the stuff that you're used to. That's because it's unfamiliar. So you need to get some things that you're really comfortable with that will make this easier for you and then you'll enjoy being in the kitchen. My favorite nonstick cookware is made by Berndez. It's a heavy duty, and it is very heavy, uh, non-stick cookware with, I, and I really like the glass lids because you can see what's going on inside. Um, and it's really important to have good non-stick cookware for a frying pan, a skillet, a griddle, because these are the things you're going to cook things in dry. There's going to be no liquid. You're not going to be sauteing in something such as the hash brown potatoes that I talked about. You put the potatoes in a dry pan that has a good nonstick finish. You cannot make hash brown potatoes in a pan that does not have a, a nonstick finish. So you put them in here, you flatten them out, you put the lid on, and you let them cook for about five to ten minutes before you even start turning them over. 
and they'll get nice and brown and crispy. You do the same things with burgers. They go in a dry, nonstick pan. Pancakes, you make them in a dry pan. Now for other cookware that you're going to be using some kind of a liquid, say water or a vegetable broth, you're going to be sauteing something, making soups, things like that. You don't really need a nonstick finish. Then you can get a good quality stainless steel pan. Or maybe you have some in your kitchen already that you're familiar with. You don't really need nonstick in that situation. A pasta pot is something else that I wouldn't want to be without. It makes cooking pasta much easier. It's a large pot. And it has an insert inside that has holes in it. You've probably seen these. So when you cook your pasta, you put the water in, you put the pasta in. And then when you're finished, you just lift out the insert. And you give it a few shakes. And you pour the pasta into a bowl. You don't have to carry the whole pot with the hot water in it over to the sink and try and dump it into a colander and maybe spill it on the way. It's much easier. And you know what else this is great for? It, you can steam your vegetables in it. You put a little bit of water in the bottom under the insert with the holes. You put your vegetables in there, and you steam them that way. And that avoids using one of those collapsible baskets. You know those things that always collapse at the wrong time? When you take them out of the pot, this works much better. And then there's another use for it. You take out the insert, and it makes a great soup pot. So you have three pans in one. So it's a worthwhile investment. Now this stuff is my favorite stuff. This is called silicone zone nonstick bakeware. And it looks like this. And I really did not make muffins before I discovered this stuff because I could not get my muffins to come out of any other nonstick bakeware. I bought all different kinds, and none of it worked well. But the miracle of this stuff is it is silicone, and so it has a very slippery nonstick finish. Things do not stick to it. And when you finish baking, whether it's muffins or anything else, you just go like this, and they pop right out. It washes up really easily. It goes directly in the oven. You just put it in the oven tray just like this. And it's just the greatest stuff. And I think there are other companies that make this. You can find this online. If you put silicone zone into your search engine, make sure you put it in as one word, silicone zone. Otherwise, what you're going to get is all of these places that do breast implants. <laughs> I've tried it. So put it in as one word. And they'll tell you where to go to find it. Um, very easy to find. Um, the loaf pans. I use, they make the square bake pans, which I make the brownies in. And um, the thing to remember when you use it is after it comes out of the oven, it takes about two minutes, and you can actually handle it. And let it sit in the pan for only about five minutes, and then take it out. Just flip it out of the pan. Don't try to cut it in the pan. It doesn't work as well. It works much better if you take the whole thing out first and put it on a platter. Now, this is something else that I wouldn't want to be without. This used to be called a crock pot. We all had them maybe 20 years ago. They came in all different kinds. Now they are programmable, and they're usually called slow cookers. This is one of my latest models. Uh, it's made by uh, Rival, I believe. And it's still called a crock pot. Um, very wonderful to use 
for cooking beans. When I make bean burritos, this is how I do it. Put my beans in the pot, cover them with quite a bit of water, add a chopped onion and some garlic, and I let them cook all day. And when I come home, they're all done. Easy to put a meal together, so that's, that's why I make bean burritos so often, not because they're delicious, because they are. They're also really easy. And my meal is planned early in the morning because I started them early. And I make chilies in this, and a lot of things that take a long time to cook. Makes it really easy when you do it in a crock pot. You can buy these kind of products very inexpensively at places like Costco. So just look for them there. Or otherwise, check in your attic. You might have an old crock pot in there, and it's time to bring it out again. There's one other thing that I want to mention that I really wouldn't want to be without, and that is a rice cooker. Rice cooker makes cooking rice much easier. Um, again, you can find these at places like Costco, Target, very inexpensively. And although rice is very easy to cook on the stove, you have to be there. And for me, I don't want to think about it. I want to put my rice on. If I want to put it on two hours before dinner, it doesn't make any difference. Cooks it perfectly every time, keeps it warm until serving. And so it's one of those things that it's a luxury, but it's well worthwhile. It makes cooking rice very simple. Anybody can do it. There's always pressure cookers. Now, pressure cookers are much easier and safer to use than the old jiggle top kind that you also might find in your attic. But if you find one of those in your attic, I'd recommend that you dump it. And if you're interested in a pressure cooker, buy one of the newer versions because they're much easier to use. They're much safer. Um, they come in all different varieties. To be honest, I have a pressure cooker that goes on the stove. I also have a programmable pressure cooker. Um, they are probably the last thing on my list. I don't use them nearly as often as I do my rice cooker and my slow cooker, and I guess that's because I, I do tend to plan ahead a little bit, and I get things ready earlier. Whereas if you're the kind of person who likes to do things at the last minute, then a pressure cooker makes it really easy because you can cook things so quickly without a lot of pre-thinking. Beans cook much faster, rice cooks much faster, other grains cook much faster. And so if that's the kind of cook you are, then invest in a good pressure cooker because it will make it easier for you. Proper cookware can make it fun to cook again. You'll have much more fun in the kitchen if you have the right things. You know, you talk about when you're building things, you have to have the right tool for the right job. The same thing is true in the kitchen. If you have the right tools, you can have a really good time cooking. And pretty soon, you'll look forward to going in the kitchen and making things because the tools that you're using will make it easy. Spend a little time finding some gadgets that make things easier for you. I have garlic peelers and garlic presses and um, the microplanes and lemon squeezers and all of these things are very small investments that make things much easier and much more fun. And that's what I want you to have. I want you to have fun in the kitchen and enjoy cooking. And then you will be successful and the program will work for you. Thank you very much.